Hello. We're gonna solve this biology paper today. This is October November 2021. 9700 paper 11. Let's look at the threshold. For paper 11, A was at 26, B was at 23. C was at 20, D was at 17, and E was at 14. Let's start. A student observes a cell using a light microscope. The student then draws the cell. Which items will the student need to calculate the magnification of the drawing? <coughs> so, when you're observing the cell using the light microscope you need then uh, the student draws the cell right so magnification is image length by actual length okay that's the formula m mia that's the mnemonic m is equal to i by a mia m i a so you will need the ruler obviously okay we need this why because without this we can't find the image length we need the ruler for that okay and we need the eyepiece reticule and the stage micrometer scale to find out the actual length okay so what's the odd one out here we don't need the hand lens that's unnecessary so we need one two and four next which equations correctly show the relationship between image magnification image size and actual size uh, it's Mia, right? So magnification is equal to image size by actual size. That's fine. Um, this is wrong. Okay. Next. Actual size is equal to image size by this. If we rearrange this algebraically, magnification is equal to image size by actual size. That, that, like, that looks good, right? So one is fine. 3 is also fine. So it's 1 and 3, 2a. Moving on to 3, in which cell structures does DNA transcription occur? So transcription occurs in the nucleus and the chloroplast and the mitochondrion. Why? Because the chloroplast and mitochondrion, according to the endosymbiont theory, they were originally bacteria. So they have 70s ribosomes, so they can perform their own transcription and make their own DNA. Which rows could correctly identify the nucleic acids present in two different virus particles in a sample of air? So, let's see. A virus either has DNA or RNA, but not both. Do you understand? Either DNA or RNA, but not both. Right, so virus a virus contains either DNA or RNA only. It can't contain both. That's the logic, okay? So uh, one is wrong and four is wrong because it has to contain one. Two and three are correct, so four should be C. Test and four samples from a mixture of biological molecules get the results shown in the table. Which biological uh, molecules were present in the mixture? Okay, so Bendix solution was blue, so we did not have a reducing sugar, okay? Boiled with excess Bendix solution after hydrolysis, okay? It was a non-reducing sugar for sure because the acid broke the bonds and then we got the reducing sugar, okay? Next, the biuret reagent gave a purple color, so we have protein. But since iodine did not turn blue black, we do not have starch, okay? So 5 is C. One molecule of X is formed by a single condensation reaction releasing one molecule of water. What is molecule X? So remember, one molecule of X is formed by a single condensation reaction releasing one molecule of water. That means only one bond was formed, okay? Only a single bond was formed. That's why the answer should be A, because in a disaccharide, 
two monosaccharides combine to form a glycosidic bond okay so only one bond is formed but in phospholipids or polysaccharides or triglycerides there are more than one bonds okay that's the thing now seven the table shows some information about carbohydrate polymers which role describes glycogen so remember glycogen is present in animals it has both 14 and 16 glycosidic bonds and it is branched it is used for storage that's why a is correct okay number eight the diagram shows four phospholipid molecules which molecule could contribute most to the fluidity of a cell surface membrane basically remember the more double bonds you have the more unsaturated you become okay so you become more fluid because of these um, double bonds okay so the answer should be d it is d understood so the more double bonds you have the more fluid your um, cell membrane is okay so it is d nine which properties of phospholipids explain why single layers of phospholipids added to water immediately form bilayers um, the hydrophobic fatty acid chains repel water so the tails pack together this is true. The non-polar fatty acid chains are attracted to each other by the hydrophobic interactions. Okay, that's cool. Basically, it's like this. They pack together. They form a muscle. Okay. So, it's like this. They can form a spherical structure where the tails are all pointed in this direction. Okay. So why is that? Mainly because the tails actually repel water, okay? So the heads point towards water, but the tails repel them. And there are some interactions between the tails, so that's right. Hydrogen bonds form between the phosphate groups and water. That's true. Hydrogen bonds actually form between water and the uh, phosphate heads, okay? So yeah, we are going to go with 9A. Then the diagram shows three examples of different bonds. Which bonds hold the tertiary structure of proteins together? Yeah, we have disulfide. This is a peptide bond, so no. 2 does not. We're going to exclude 2. So the answer should be C. This is, a, this is a hydrogen bond, right? It does hold the tertiary structure. 11. Which feature of collagen enables it to fulfill a structure role in skin and its tendons? Okay. Mm, okay. It's tendons. We need strength, structural support, right? Adjacent collagen molecules are linked by ester bonds. Wrong. Collagen fibers form layers with the fibers in different directions. Okay. Collagen molecules are formed as a triple helix of palpita chains. This looks good. Palpita chains of collagen are tightly folded into compact shapes. This is totally wrong. C is the best answer. Okay. They're just talking about the structure of collagen. You guys know what it's like, right? It's a triple triple helix. Okay. Number 12. The graph shows how the concentrations of four components, 1, 2, 3, and 4, of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction change with time. Hmm. What is the... Which component is the enzyme substrate complex? Okay, hear me out. Look at number three. We have um, the product, reactant, and enzyme substrate complex. These three, actually. So one is clearly the product because uh, it takes time. Okay, it takes time for products to form. And initially, product is zero. Let's look at four. Four remains constant throughout the whole journey. So that's the enzyme. It is never used up. Now look at 3. That's the reactant. It's being used up. But what about 2? Initially, there are no enzyme substrate complexes. Sorry, I mean initially. Look at 2. Sorry about this. Um, okay. For 12, the graph shows how the concentrations of 4 components, 1, 2, 3, and 4, of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction change with time. This is a very common question and it's really important. Which component is the enzyme substrate complex? Okay. So, basically, if you think about it, the answer is D. But I'm going to show you a variation. Okay. I'm going to show you another variation. Like, uh, someone sh uh, showed me this in an MCQ. Basically, there's a variation, I don't know if it's in 2017, 18 or 19, where the graph is like this. 4 is like this, and 2 is like this, right? And um, 3 is like this, 
while one is like this okay so what is one one is basically the um, product okay one is the product what about three three is the reactant clearly since it's decreasing now four is the enzyme substrate complex it should really be this light green line personally i think so because initially there are none in the middle we get the highest okay and then at the end it kind of falls down because the substrates run out so if you get a horizontal line or that line you're gonna go with the enzyme substrate complex okay but what about uh, two what is that it's actually the free enzymes do you understand the free enzymes because think about it dark green and light green what's the relationship between them as the dark green line decreases as the free enzyme decreases it's actually getting a bound to substrates to form enzyme substrate complexes right so the free enzymes are decreasing but at the end the free enzymes increase again so 12 is d 13 the table shows michael is maintained constant km for three enzymes which interpretation of the information is correct listen up guys the lower the value the better so af has the highest affinity for a substrate okay Enzyme C has a Vmax which is half that of enzyme P. What? This is no interpretation. We don't know about Vmax here, okay? We don't know anything. Enzyme F has the greatest affinity for the substance. This is good. This looks good, okay? Because the lower the value, the greater the affinity. Remember that. Vmax. Like uh, the substrate concentration at half Vmax is the Michaelis Menten constant. What explains how a single molecule produced by one cell can be detected by a target cell? Okay, so a single molecule can bind to any type of cell receptor. No, that actually doesn't serve the purpose, right? A single molecule has a complementary shape to a specific cell surface receptor. This looks good, okay? Like suppose for insulin, the hormone insulin can only bind to a specific uh, receptor on the membrane, right? Some enzymes are produced in the cells of the pancreas. The enzymes are secreted when required. Which process is used to transfer these enzymes out of the cell of the pancreas? Okay. Secretion. Remember, secretion. Who is in charge of secreting? Packing is done by Golgi body. It's packed into vesicles and then it's released from the cell by exocytosis. Always remember that. Active process. Plant cells were submerged in a solution with a water potential less negative than that found inside the cells. What describes the condition of the plant cell after 20 minutes? So plant cells were submerged in a solution less negative or more positive. Water potential was higher. So water will come into the cells, right? Less negative. And it becomes turgid. It does not burst, okay? Because the plants have a cell wall. Our animal cells do not. What will be present in each chromosome at the end of G2 phase? Basically, remember... S phase has occurred, so DNA has replicated and basically chromosomes will start to condense at the beginning of prophase, right? So look at the structure, since DNA has replicated, after condensation it should look like this. So what are we expecting here? we'll be having two molecules of dna okay this is the correct thing why i'll tell you because this hasn't happened yet this will happen in prophase okay two centrioles right these things two telomeres they're actually in each chromosome there are actually four you know two centromeres no no, we only have one. Okay, we are going to have two molecules of DNA because after S phase, basically DNA has replicated. That's it. Which event listed, events listed are part of the cell cycle. Um, okay, so the cell cycle mainly has three parts. What are they? Two parts, actually. If you think about the broader aspect. We have interface, okay, we have interface, that's the biggest phase, followed by the mitotic cell cycle with four stages and cytokinesis. So in the mitotic cell cycle, what do we have? In mitosis, basically, we have four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. 
So indirectly, this is a part of the cell cycle. And we do have interface and cytokinesis, so 18 should be A. Next, which feature of an organism are affected by a drug that kills cells that are dive, uh, dividing uh, mitotically? Cell repair, right, that will be affected. Nineteen, right? Which features of an organism are affected by a drug that kills cells that are dividing mitotically? Okay. This is an interesting one. Why is mitosis required? You need to think of uh, the requirements of mitosis. Mitosis is mainly required, like, all of these may seem right in 19. All of these may seem right, okay? But I'm going to clarify. Basically, if you think about it, mitosis is required for tissue repair rather than cell repair. It's required for cell replacement, <clears throat> but we don't say it's usually, we don't say that it's cell repair. Okay, basically, I want to show you something. Let's, let's see this from the course book, right? Um, if we go to mitosis, what do we see? The requirement. Yeah, we see this three stages, right? Interface, nuclear division, and cell division. Wait, wait, wait. Right, so importance of mitosis, okay? This is really important. It's required for the replacement of damaged or dead cells and repair of tissues by cell replacement. Okay, it's not cell repair, rather it's tissue repair. It's required for the growth of multicellular organisms and it's also required for asexual reproduction. So that's the main, uh, that's the important part, okay? So back to this. Uh, so cell repair is actually not correct. Okay, cell repair is not correct. Cell replacement is fine, tissue repair is fine, okay? Now, which features of an organism are affected by a drug that kills cells that are dividing mitotically, okay? So, obviously, tumor formation will be affected because it requires mitosis. So, for sure, we're going to have, we are not going to have one, right? That only leads us to NCT. And, yeah, number of stem cells is also important. Because uh, stem cells have the ability to divide into other cells. So if this drug inhibits that, obviously the number of stem cells will also be affected. Number 20, the graph shows how the distance between sister chromatids and the distance between chromatids and centrioles changes during part of mitosis. Which statements could be correct? So curve Q is the distance between chromatids and centrioles. Curve P represents the distance between two sister chromatids. Okay. So this is the equator. At metaphase, it's like this. And what happens at anaphase and telophase? Basically, they split apart and move in opposite directions towards the centrioles. Correct? That's why curve Q decreases over time. So when does this change start occurring? I told you, right? right after metaphase and at the start of anaphase. So T to W, what does it represent? T to W is basically, I guess T to V, this is prophase and this is metaphase, probably. Okay, um, but hear me out. They're talking about interphase here, right? They're talking about interphase. T 
T2V represents interface. No, T2V doesn't represent interface because the chromosomes haven't condensed. The beginning of T is at like prophase, maybe it's somewhere in the middle of prophase. Okay, T2W. T2W represents metaphase. Actually, this is true. Yeah, T2W does represent metaphase. Uh, W2X represents anaphase. That's true. So, 3 is correct and 2 is correct. Okay. So, we're going to go with B. Now, hear me out. Uh, basically, T2W. There was no way of knowing whether the whole thing was metaphase. It might have been the last stages of um, prophase too, you know because the chromosomes condense but yeah basically it is metaphase but one is wrong for sure okay number 21 which statement helps to explain why the two sugar phosphate chains in a dna molecule are a constant distance apart adenine and thymine are held together by the same number of hydrogen but no 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 wrong each nucleotide molecule is the same size wrong there are two types right purines and pyrimidines each purine base is linked to a pyrimidine this is true adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine okay number 22 during dna replication what must happen before a newly added nucleotide is bonded to the next nucleotide in the strand okay what must happen before a newly added nucleotide is bonded to the next nucleotide in the strand so the DNA has opened right 5 prime to 3 prime it's like this in one direction goes like this and the other direction we get some Okazaki fragments right like this so what must happen before a newly added nucleotide is bonded to the next nucleotide in the strand basically uh, there's one nucleotide here and there's another one here what must happen before a bond is created between them okay sure so we must form complementary base pairing pairing of course right with the template strand okay there yeah so complementary base pairing requires hydrogen bond formation three is wrong because phosphodiester bond formation is the bond between the two nucleotides right so three is in fact wrong 23 an antibiotic enters bacterial cells through a membrane channel protein some bacterial cells have shown resistance to this antibiotic by acquiring a mutation which alters P. This mutation prevents the entry of the antibiotic into the cell. Which conclusions can be drawn about how resistance to this antibiotic developed in these bacteria? Okay. This, the mutation changed the order of amino acids in the gene coding for P. The mutation resulted in the production of P with an altered tertiary structure. The antibiotic is a hydrophobic molecule and so cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer to enter the cell. Okay, 3 is for sure wrong. Okay, 3 is for sure wrong because hydrophobic molecules can pass straight through. So, 3 is wrong. We're going to ignore 3 and according to that, I can get to 2 only. Okay, so the mutation did result in a change in the tertiary structure. Now, the mutation changed the order of amino acids in the gene coding for P. Um, basically, the mutations don't change the order. Mutations are of like substitution, addition, you know, deletion. But it's not like they can change, like amino acid 3 cannot come into amino acid 2's position. It, can't, it, it isn't like that, okay? They probably meant that by statement 1. Yeah, the frame can be shifted, but it's not like the order can be interchanged or something, okay? So, we uh, got a certain protein with an altered tertiary structure, so it cannot function properly. One is just not the best answer, okay? Two, two is much, two is only accepted, right? Plus, uh, you could go through it because you know that three is wrong, so uh, you're going to eliminate these three. What is the correct theory anticodon for the amino acid proline? So, this is the DNA triplet, GGT. So, for mRNA, it will be C, C, 
A and for TRN the anticodon it will be G G U okay so 24 D G G U next the table shows the observations made by student about three different cell types PQR seen in a transverse section of a plant stem using a light microscope ratio of cell wall width to whole cell width 1 is to 10 So basically it's 1 is to 10, right? So the cell wall is quite wide. It's thick. The cell wall is quite wide here. Think about it. What are you thinking of? And it has no cell contents. Clearly we are reaching a conclusion, right? This is probably a xylem based element. Next. Both of these are 1 is to 20. Regular pattern of circles in some cells. Granular appearances in all cells. Okay. So, it's between C and D. Which one is a component cell and which one is the phloem sieve tube element, right? So, since this is a transverse section, right? Since it's a transverse section, basically this was the vessel. We cut it like this. Now we're viewing it from above, right? So, we're seeing a regular pattern of circles. What does that mean? You remember in the phloem sieve tube, the structure is like this. We have a sieve, right? That's why we see a pattern of circles there. Okay? So for that reason, 25 should be D. Because we can correlate this structure with the flow of tube. Okay? Water molecules are attracted to each other. This is this property is important in the upward movement. Which term is used to describe the attraction between water molecules themselves? Remember, blue is an adhesive, right? glue sticks other substances together that's how i remember so this is actually cohesion attraction between yourself similar types of molecules is called cohesion and between different molecules adhesion water to the cell wall lignin right 27 the diagram shows a model to demonstrate mass flow in a plant what are the structures w x y z and what is the direction of flow of solution along w okay So, mass flow is basically the flow from the roots to leaves. You need to understand that, okay? Now, let's try to figure this out. What is 27? 27, they're saying that uh, W is flow M. Which is true because sucrose should be here, right? Sucrose should be here. And X is xylem. That's true because water flows through xylem. Okay, that's why C and D are wrong. It's between A and B. Now, in A, they're saying that Y are the roots and Z are the leaves. So, hear me out. What happens in my slow? This is a leaf, right? So, there is a lot of water flowing in the roots that's why water potential actually increases here and in the leaves water potential really decreases because evaporation plus you know uh, sugars are produced so the leaves should have lower water potential or concentrated sucrose due to production so why should be leaves right that's why the answer is b and the flow should always be from roots to leaves that means Like, if you think about it, flow of, what is the duration of flow of solution along W? That's what they want, right? In 27. So W is the flow. X is the xylem, clearly. If you think about water, right? Water will move in X, okay? from the roots to leaves so i just told you that z is much more dilute right this this place basically the this is the root this is the leaf so water actually flows from here to here but what about phloem basically 
in the component cells, we basically load phloem in, right? As a result, after loading phloem, water potential decreases, so water will come in and the hydrostatic pressure gradient is built up. Then water flows through phloem from the leaves to the roots. That's why the answer should be from leaves to roots, Y to Z. That's the logic, okay? That's for phloem, but for xylem, it's the other way around, from the roots to the leaves. Transpiration flow, okay? 28. The parts of the heart that control heart action are listed. SAN, avian, and percan tissue. Which row is correct for atrial contraction and ventricular contraction? Okay, 28. Uh, avian produces waves of excitation and SN produces waves. This is wrong. SN actually provides the waves of excitation for atria. Atrial contraction. Percan tissue, it has no role in atrial conduction. Okay. SN and avian produce waves. This is this. Looks okay. Perkine tissue carries waves of excitation. Okay. D. SN produces waves of excitation. Now, this is true. So, guys, what is wrong with avian and what does it do? Avian is mainly required for producing a time delay. It's mainly a middleman between the SN and perkine tissue. It's there so that a time delay is produced so that all blood from the atria can be released and it goes into the ventricles. Do you get it? So, but it doesn't produce anything. SN mainly does and it goes to AVN followed by the percan tissue. So, 28D is the best answer. 29, which the diagram shows part of the circulatory system in a mammal. Where is the blood pressure and the speed of flow the lowest? Okay. So, as you go further from the heart, blood pressure decreases. So, we should have least blood pressure at D, the veins, the vena cava, okay? And the lowest speed of flow is actually in the capillaries. So you guys need to remember that. So, that best exchange can take place. 30. The photobiograph shows human blood. What type of cell is X? Okay, guys. So, as you can see, X has some lobes, right? X has a lobe, two lobes actually. And um, it can't be a monocyte. I'll tell you why. Because if it's a monocyte, okay, if it's a monocyte, it would have a kidney-shaped nucleus. One kidney-shaped nucleus, okay? not the uh, no lobes right it wouldn't have lobes it would have a kidney sh shaped one kidney shaped nucleus now for a lymphocyte there's a huge circular nucleus okay there's a huge circular nucleus like this surrounded by a ream of cytoplasm so clearly we don't have that here so these are not lymphocytes either this is a phagocyte basically it's either Clearly, it's a neutrophil, all right? It's a neutrophil, not a macrophage. It's a neutrophil. Neutrophils have these lobed nuclei, all right? Moving on. Tell when the diagram shows some of the reactions of carbon dioxide when it enters the blood from cells in a metabolically active tissue. Which reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase? Mainly, it catalyzes the reaction between carbon dioxide and water. And water in the RBC. Do you guys understand? Not in the plasma. It's an enzyme present in the RBC. So a lot of you might have picked A, but remember the same reaction, carbon dioxide and water to carbonic acid. And it's a two-way reaction. It also catalyzes the reverse one. It, it is catalyzed. Okay, C. 31 C. 32. The graph shows the oxygen dissociation curve for hemoglobin in animals that live at high altitude and animals that live at low altitude. What explains the oxygen, oxygen dissociation curve at high altitude? Remember guys, at high altitude, as you can see, the curve is shifted to the left. When does the curve shift to the right? The Bohr shift, right? The curve shifts to the right when there's higher carbon dioxide concentration. Okay, that means uh, affinity for hemoglo oxygen decreases. Hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen decreases if the curve shifts to the right. So, when will the curve shift to the left? When, you know, affinity for oxygen increases, that's the logic. Okay, because at high altitudes, acclimatization occurs and some people get some adaptations, okay? That's why the, their hemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen. That's why it shifts to the left. B is wrong. It's the total opposite. 
there's no bore shift here no carbon dioxide okay hemoglobin releases oxygen more easily that's the one for the right hand side curve okay 33 the diagram shows three features found in the mammalian gas exchange system okay which structures of the gas exchange system could be represented by x we need all three cartilage goblet cells and ciliated epithelium okay so we see all of these right in both trachea and bronchus but not in the bronchioles okay we don't see cartilage in the bronchioles what are the short-term effects of nicotine? We don't have this in our service anymore. Skip. Moving on to 35. Also, we don't have all diseases anymore in our service, okay? Still, some features of a disease are listed. It can be transmitted by animals to other animals, including humans. One mode is transfusion with contaminated blood. The causative agent can show multiple drug resistance. So, this is it. This is the nail in the coffin. So... The majority of humans who die from the disease are children okay so let's try to think about this it is transferred by animal to other animals okay and one method of transfusion is by transfusion with contaminated blood the causative agent can show multiple drug resistance typically we uh, correlate drug resistance with malaria and tb but here since there's a vector okay since it can be transmitted like this, terrified. the better option is actually malaria, okay, C. And children do die from this disease. The following advice was given to a person traveling to a country where there had been an outbreak of an infectious disease. Cook food well and eat it hot, peel fruit and vegetables, drink only cool boiled water, wash hands often with soap and cool boiled water. So typically this is about cholera because it's a feco it is transferred by the fecal route and uh, you need hygiene okay which description of multiple drug resistance in bacteria is correct bacteria have dna with resistant genes for several different types of antibiotics this looks good right xdrtb one bacteria has resistant genes for different types of uh, antibiotics okay not one type 38. Which description of a T lymphocyte is correct? They can only be found in blood. So which description of a T lymphocyte is correct? They are only found in blood and secrete cytokines in response to infection. No, they are not only found in blood. They can leave the blood through and accumulate at sites of infection. This is true, okay? inflammation they can leave the blood blood and secrete cytotoxins when exposed to bacteria they circulate in blood and always present antigens uh, typically antigen presenting cells are macrophages right what about c they can leave the blood and secrete cytotoxins when exposed to bacteria that's the role of t killer cells not exposure they do that to attack bacteria right with the help of a T helper cell. So C isn't entirely correct. 39. Where antibodies found during an immune response? They're found both in blood plasma and on the surface of memory cells. Antibodies act as markers. Okay. So memory cells are required for the secondary response, right? So that the response can occur much quicker. Monoclonal antibodies are used in the diagnosis and treatment of disease. They are produced using a technique known as cell fusion. Which two structures are fused together in this technique? Okay, so mainly we produce hybridoma cells by fusing together cancer cells and plasma cells. Okay, really important. And we get clones or hybridoma cells after fusing them. That's the answer. Okay, so that's it. I'll be linking the playlist for paper one up here and I'm going to be solving ON 2021, right? Variant 1-2 and ON 2021, variant 1-3. So I'll be linking those over here. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Also, I just want to check one more thing. Uh, is, this the, is this variant the same as the other two? No, they are different, right? Okay, so they are unique. So yeah, I'll be doing that and after this I'll be uh, doing May, June and Feb, March 2021 as well. Okay, see you then.